I love, I was talking with Stephen. He was asking, hey, what's coming up for Sunday? Where are we going? And and I was just kind of sharing some things with him that God was stir, had, had been stirring in my heart for a few weeks now. And uh, next week, or sometime soon here, we'll, we're getting back to Philippians. Um, and I said, I just, I'm not quite ready to get back yet. As we start this new year, I've just been, I've been thinking about our congregation. I've been thinking about my own life, been listening to the Lord and what he's speaking to me and what's been stirring in my own heart. I said, I just feel like I've, I've got something that I want to share, uh, but it's kind of a, a unique, it's, it's something that has bothered me kind of about, about the Bible and about, you know, and, and we know that when we get bothered, it's not on God's end, right? Like it's our own thing that we've got to wrestle through and bothered is kind of too strong of a word, but um, I just, I've found it interesting and, and odd. And, uh, and it's, and it's kind of all of the, because, because the Bible is the Bible, the word of God. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. It's, it's the word of God that has been inspired and breathed by the Holy spirit and protected and, and saved all these years. And so every word that's in there, it's, it's for you. It's for me. It's for something. It's not just, there's not like God didn't have something to say that day. So he used some filler words and then, oh, then he's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Say this too. Like every word that's in there is, is for us. And so I would read over my Christian life some of the things that were in there. And it just, it seemed inconsistent. And it seemed like there was these moments of the glory of God. I mean, just supernatural, powerful things. And then just normal stuff. And the Bible would record normal stuff. There's just normal stuff. Like for instance... In the Christmas story, like we just have come through, you know, Christmas season here. So just even in the Christmas story, you've got Elizabeth and Zachariah who have been living their life well, doing what? Doing their normal stuff. It says they, were, they led righteous lives. Oh, they must have been like some superstars or something. Nope. You know what he did? He served in the temple. So he would go to work in the temple and he would, you know, shear his sheep and they cut, I don't know what all his sacrificial duty was but you know he would offer the sacrifices and do the different things and and you know Elizabeth would do the, whatever she was doing at home I don't I don't know doesn't really say what she did but they just lived life and yet the bible records that they lived righteous lives it record records the normal living of them as living righteous lives you know, it's, it's pointing to their heart. It's pointing to, you know, the work that God's doing in them. And then all of a sudden, leaving, leading normal, living normal lives, there's an angel. All of a sudden, Gabriel stands before him, and he's like, oh, what? You know, and then he ends up not being able to talk and, and writes out his name is going to be John later on. And, you know, this miraculous event. And I think about... I think about Joseph and Mary and just the angelic encounters, right? Supernatural. Say supernatural. Supernatural angelic encounters. I mean, the glory of the Lord. God shows up. Angels are giving announcements. Mary's like, okay, be it unto me according to your word. All right. Just, and then she conceives this baby that, you know, God come to earth in her womb angelic encounters, supernatural event. And then you know what they did, right? Went on a tour with book signings and whatever, you know, you know what they did? Very, very, very pregnant, rode a donkey to 90 miles to Bethlehem. Huh? You want to talk about normal and mundane I, uncomfortable. We did our, our, when we did all of our tours of the United States that started out on a whim and then turned into a thing that we did. Um, we did the first one was to the East Coast and we'd never been there in, in that neck of the woods. And then our second one, we're like, all right, let's do West Coast. And I don't know if you guys have been West or not. West, West is a long way from East. <laughs> it's just... The state of Montana goes on, I don't know, Texas is big, but Montana is like four times the size in, a, in half the space. I don't know. It just takes forever to get through Montana. Well, we went through uh, two, or th two mountain ranges for sure, and uh, 5,380 miles or something like that round trip, and, uh, and in like 12 days or something like that, or 13 days. And uh, did all kinds of things, saw the Redwoods, and you know, went to San Francisco and got sourdough, and we went to... to uh, Oh, just all over. I saw my sister. Anyways, well, Marnie was really pregnant. You know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Pregnant-ish. 
Yeah, five to six months pregnant. So 5,000 miles plus being five months pregnant. Oh, right after taking the youth on a 2,800 or 3,000 mile trip to the East Coast, we left 10 days apart. Uh, we stood in Washington, D.C. and Washington State on two different trips. So Marnie mentioned more than once how this was not comfortable. <laughs> Her ribs really hurt. So I'm thinking about Mary riding this donkey 90 miles on a donkey. You want to talk about mundane. You want to talk about ordinary. You want to talk about uncomfortable. I, I've got to think that Mary's got to be like, Joseph, you had the angel too, right? He's like, yep. Where are they at now? Where's the angels now? Where's the miraculous? Like, I mean, I'm more than willing to do the donkey, but gosh, I don't know what it's like to be pregnant. Where do you think? I don't know. Like, where, where's, where's, the, where's the divine help? Where's the supernatural here? You know, wise men, the supernatural seed when Daniel was taken captive in Babylon and he was promoted that his God, the God of Daniel, he was the chief magician because his God could get results. And he was promoted, you know, to like second in the kingdom of Babylon. Now, whatever, a thousand years later or whatever, Daniel was prophetic, and he wrote out a bunch of stuff, and so now these wise men from Babylon, a thousand years later, or 800 years later, or whatever it is, have these problems, because God sovereignly orchestrated it, and now they know to look for this star. Now they're following this supernatural star, and they're showing up to uh, see Jesus, and... Uh, Amazing, incredible, a thousand years of history coming to culmination. You know what they did next? You got to flee to Egypt because Herod's going to kill us. Well, what are we doing? Well, get the baby. We're going to Egypt. Because there's it's supernatural? Eh, doesn't feel like it right now. It feels like I want to be in my warm bed, but we're traveling in the middle of the night to escape this king who's going to kill us. Huh. What would they do in Egypt? Exciting things? No. They, they lived their life. And Jesus lives 30 more years in obscurity. What was he doing? He's living his life. I th I, we watched, uh, Stephen said, you need to check out the, the shepherd. Shepherds, the shepherd, I don't know. Um, it's, it's pieces of, uh, what do you call it, the Chosen series uh, that one church put together. It's like 28 minutes long. And uh, so our family watched that for Christmas. And it's just amazing. And what struck me was, and the glory of the Lord appeared before them and filled the sky. And angel said, you know, good news, great joy, glad tidings, whatever, you know, peace, all this stuff. Angelic encounter. And it, the Bible records that then they went to see the baby. They, they traveled to Bethlehem or whatever to see the baby Jesus. And when I was watching it on TV, you know what they did? They walked in and they saw Jesus and then they left. Is that like this is recorded in the scripture and it's a culmination of from the creation of time God had this ordained. But you know what? Like, I'm not saying that what God was doing in their hearts and I mean, Emmanuel, God with us. I mean, wow, greatest thing that's ever happened. But you know what a lot of it was like? Walking all the way to Bethlehem and coming in through this old wooden door to a stable, like, it was normal. I mean, it was not normal because it's the Son of God. You know what I mean? It's this marriage of supernatural God encounters with Tuesday. And that's always just, I've struggled with that. Peter's in prison, and he's like, okay, and I, he gets a nudge, and he... I'm seeing a vision, right? And he doesn't even know that this is real life. And he's this dynamic God encounter. The doors open up before him and he walks out. And, and guess what happened to all those guards? They got killed and he ends up at the door and, and uh, Rhoda or whatever her name was, she's like, oh, it's Peter. And they're like, no, it's his angel. Like this supernatural encounter where Peter walks out of prison because the angel leads him out. And Paul goes to prison and he, well, he sits there. 
Well, there's a different time where it's shaken. And he's like, okay, finally, now this is my time. And he's like, no, we're still here, whatever. And then the jailer gets saved. That's Philippians. But then later he goes to prison and, and he sits there. And Paul is at a place in his life where his sweat rags are healing people. And Epaphroditus comes to him and just about dies. There's some that's really mundane. There's some that's really normal. And then there's some that's dynamic and supernatural. And I just find that it is incredible. Uh, Taylor and I were having a conversation the other night, and Callie was running around. And Callie had on Taylor's snowboard goggles. <laughs> okay? So... Kelly's head's this big, the goggles are this big, right? So she's running around with these snowboarding goggles on, and she is just giggling her head off. And that caught Taylor. He's like, she's so joyful. And he just, and it just went on and on and on. I don't know if you know this about kids. Like, you know, like my text to Tara, you know, after 419 times of that's awesome. I don't know what else to say. But kids, it doesn't matter. You throw them up in the air once, guess what they want to do again? again. Throw them up in the air again. Oh, well, after 17 times, my arms are getting tired. Guess what they want again? <laughs> no, we did this already. Again! We did this. Like, they, are, they have this, I believe, supernatural, divine, God-given ability to find the wonder in the ordinary. I want to reclaim the wonder of the ordinary. As I was thinking about going into 2022... I love that when I talked to Stephen about this, it was some stuff that God had already been talking to his heart about. And that as I was stirring in my life and heart, I listened to John Tyson's sermon, and he's talking about the miraculous and the mundane. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And so I'm reading uh, John Mark Comer's book, Live, uh, Live No Lies, and he's talking about the miraculous and the mundane. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm sensing a theme here. God's speaking to my heart. And so as we walk into 2022, I feel like, like us as, as Christ followers, we're really good at pendulum swings, right? Really good at pendulum swings. You know, society does it, but even the church does it as well. And so there's this, this dynamic of uh, holding these things in tension. It's a word that Stephen and I say all the time. I've said it up here many times. But you cannot read the Bible without finding tension. And I don't mean tension like, someone's upset. I mean, I mean tension between two ideas that seem opposite, but they're not. They're, they're held in tension in Scripture, um, and there's just there's hundreds of them. And this is one of them. The idea of the supernatural. God shows up, does things that we can't even imagine. We heard some of them. We heard of supernatural healing, supernatural provision as God was keeping them safe, supernatural healing as God's working through doctors. We're healing you know, all about the spectrum of things today. And so as a, as a Pentecostal, charismatic, chandelier, swinger, whatever you want to call us, kind of a church, man, I, I want to walk into, I, two weeks ago, I preached on make room, make room for the miraculous. Like that was my message. That was stirring in my heart. Like 2022, make room for the miraculous. Let's open up. Let's peel back our souls and say, God, do it again. Stir up my faith, God. I want to. I haven't seen relationships immediately restored. I haven't seen every marriage healed yet. I haven't seen every disease healed yet. I haven't seen every life transformed yet. I still see people that are on drugs that I've prayed for that can't shake it. I want to see the power of God come in ways that I've never even witnessed before. I want to see that in 2022. Too. Amen? But I run the risk of getting disappointed. And then I just give up. And I swing all the way to this side. And I get really excited to tell you that, hey, God is God and he's good, but we're just meant to live our lives. And is that true? Yes. Yes. The scriptures are filled with Mondays. Filled with doing what you do. What are we doing for the Lord today? We're putting the roast in the oven. <laughs> wow. The miraculous and the mundane. And we feel like these are opposite. But it's this squished together kingdom reality. 
It's a kingdom reality, the miraculous and the mundane. So I want you this morning to just be challenged to not be on the, what's those clock, grandfather clocks, those ones that had the thing? Yep, not, but to really dive right down the heart of it, saying, because sometimes us, us miracle people, we're not really good at day-to-day -day life. <laughs> people like to be around us because we're excited, right? And we believe God can do these things, but you've got these other people that walk so solidly with God, and I'm like, oh, man. You're just like not shaken by anything, you know, right? You're just, you're just one foot in front of the other. How do I learn that one foot in front of the other on Thursday is no less kingdom living than seeing 16 people healed when I put my hands on them? It's the same God and the same call for our lives. So as we're walking into this new year, I feel like the best way for us to thrive is to develop both of those sides of the pendulum. Like contend for the faith, contend for the supernatural, contend for the miraculous, contend for breakthrough. I want to see people that have heard the gospel for 40 years and have never responded that this is their year. This is their moment. This is the time when God's going to break into their life and soften their hearts. I want to see people who have been up front and they've been right here 9,813 times, but 9,814, they're going to see the glory of God and they're going to finally be healed. I want to see breakthrough. I want to see the power of God move. But you want to know what else I want to see? I want to see you on Saturday afternoon walking with the Lord, doing dishes, yeah. knowing that I've got this because God's got me. And we're not, well, you know what? I prayed again, but I believe in God. I believe him. I believe he's got this. What is he teaching me right now? And so it's this balance between not letting go of God's got more of not stopping dreaming. Sorry, I'm really spitting today. I just, you might want to move back a row or two. <laughs> not letting go of, of, of big vision. Come on. Open the door of your closet of your life and find out what dead dreams are in there. Kick them and resurrect them today. What words has God given you? Well, that was 12 years ago. I don't care. Breathe life into those buggers. Come on. What, what vision, what, what giftings is God stirring in you that, well, that, that's going to have to be a God thing. All right, that's good. If it's beyond us, that's good. That's what I want to see. I want to see the miraculous. I want to see God doing God things on, on God-sized platforms. But I also want to see the glory of God in the quiet moment on Thursdays. I don't have to wait for things to be right out there. I don't have to wait for a miracle for my life to be good with God. I don't have to wait for, oh, but, so you're just giving up? Not a bit. I'm content. Wait, wait till you hear my prayers when I go to bed tonight. Man, I'm so excited. I'm believing God's going to do it like tonight, like when I'm sleeping. But you're so, yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm walking in faithfulness right now. It's the peace of the Lord. So I've got the joy of God in my heart. So I'm walking in the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, but you're, you're just doing taxes. Mm -hmm. Praise Jesus. Thank you, God, that you've given us money this year to do ta pay taxes on. Right? Developing the awareness for the presence of God in my mundane moments as he's shaping my character and never letting go of the hem of his garment. What are you doing? Well, I'm just sitting at my desk doing taxes. I'm doing what? Hanging on to the hem of his garment. I'm contending. I'm not letting go. But I don't, I don't have to live out all here. Ah! And I'm not talking about personality. I'm talking about, about faith. But God's, just what Tarot was talk, talking about this morning. Like there was, a, there, was a, there was a supernatural healing there. But you know what came before the supernatural healing? Really, really, really Hard, mundane things. And guess what God did in the hard, 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 mundane things? Where, where did God move in that? In the hard, mundane things or in the supernatural healing? Yes. Right. Do you get that? God moved as much in the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as he did in that moment when my body is healed. And I, right? 
That's what I want us to see. I want us to see that God is stirring our hearts this year to live the supernatural that looks like the ordinary. The miraculous in the mundane. The miraculous of the mundane. Here is a, a quote from John Tyson. We must learn to live in... Now, John said this. We've been saying this word, Stephen. I feel like... Stephen, I feel like we had this word before John did. <laughs> we're going to claim that. Yeah. It's not true, but we're going to claim it. We must learn to live in the tension between the supernatural intervention of God through miraculous power <laughs> and long, boring days, hard days, filled with normal work and the human experience. Come on, we must learn to live in the tension, learn to live right in the middle of that, between supernatural intervention of God through miraculous power and long, boring, hard days filled with normal work and the human experience. Because our, our thought is when, when we've got a handful of Mondays behind us, we're like, huh, must not be praying hard enough. I must not be, uh, huh, huh, right? I want you to, in 2022, I want to get rid of the, huh, right? Because God is breathing life into you. He is putting his finger on things in your heart and life that he wants to do. He's, we're learning to recognize his voice in those quiet, still moments where it looks like nothing is going on. And yet God is breathing on those. You guys, uh, you guys know this. We, uh. Oh, I didn't even plug my computer in this morning. Been so excited about God moments today, we didn't even we didn't even hook up. All right, there we are. Thank you. <laughs> Deuteronomy six four, the Shema. You know this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with how much of your heart? All of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. And he goes on to say this. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Check this out. That is a, a modern day representation of the phylacteries. Okay? They're the the word of God is bound in these little leather boxes on their head and on their arms, on their hands, right? This is in, in Jewish, the Jewish religion, right? Write them. Imagine. See, this is all mundane stuff. It's not supernatural God moment, you know, angels coming from heaven. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday stuff. I want the word of God and the God of the word to be in my heart, but in my hands and my thoughts. And when we realize that, I'm going to go back to the verse again. When we realize that, imagine, imagine talking to somebody with that big leather box on their head. It's pretty hard to malign someone that's created in his image. Because see, now, now God now is now between me and you. And if I'm looking at that thing on your head, it's harder for me to attack you when I see, man, God's right there. It's harder for me to set about evil with my hands when I look down and on my hands and my arm, there's, there's God right there. It's harder for me to dwell on those evil self-centered thoughts when I feel this thing right there. And that's symbolic of what God wants to do in our hearts in 2022. God doesn't want our God moments to just be at COC or at a conference or some big gathering. We love those and they have different purposes, but God wants our God moments to be as I work with my hands and as I do my relationships, look at this, impress them on your children, like relationally. Talk to them about the things of God. Let's tell God stories. Talk about them when you sit at home. What are you doing? We're having a God moment. What, what are you doing? We're just sitting in our chairs. So who's preaching? Nobody. We're talking to our kids. Oh, 
When you sit at home, when you walk along the road, what are you doing when you're walking along the road? You might be going to work. You might be going to play. You might be visiting someone else. Well, that's like a supernatural. Yeah, we're walking. I'm going from here to there. I'm traveling. I'm in my car. I'm just doing the things. When you lie down and when you get up, like when I finish my day, when I begin my, my period of rest, and when I wake up to embrace the day, that's when I should be thinking about these God things, these word of God. Tie them as symbols on your hands. Bind them on your foreheads. We already talked about them. Write them on the door frames of your houses. How many times are, are our homes not a sanctuary? Don't nod your heads. I mean, yes. How many, how many times does my family get the brunt of what I've been frustrated with all day? Mm. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Write them on the door frames. As I walk into my home, keep God ever before me. Let's have God moments. Write them on, on your gates. All of my property, all of my dealings, all of the things that I call my own. Let's let God be in the middle of all that. Do you see how mundane? This is all mundane. This is Tuesday, Wednesday stuff. This whole entire list here, it's all just normal stuff. So let me ask you this question. How many parts are there to your whole life? Love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, right? How many parts are there to my life? The right answer, the God answer, the Bible answer is one. But that's not how I live and that's not how you live. We live with, well, I've, I'm going to church, I've got, and, and none of you do this, but other people do this in different places. I've got the church me, right? And I've got the work me, right? Then I've got my home me, where I'm a little more gruff because I don't have to put on a front anymore, right, Marnie? Right? <laughs> I've got my vacation me, and right? We've got all these different parts of our life that are not so congealed. And, and we might not be consistent in all those parts of our life. And I'm just saying, in 2022, here, here was the, the picture that I had in my mind. You see, uh, we're entering the kingdom of God. Well, what part of us? Right. All of us. Wholeheartedly. Wholly in the... As the kingdom, see, see, it's a new kingdom. It's a, it's a kingdom. It's a, it's a system of government. It's a system of ruling, reigning, and living. Well, I'm going to heaven someday. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, right. A absolutely. But that's, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the kingdom of God coming to bear in my life. Kingdom. Say kingdom. Kingdom. A kingdom has a king. And things that happen in the kingdom. And that kingdom of God is what you're coming into. You're coming into the kingdom of God. It's now and it's not yet. We're seeing, we're seeing the glimmers of it at, at times parts of it, at sometimes fuller parts of it. And it's the now and not yet. It's both of those. It's that tension. But we're coming into this kingdom. Well, what part of me? All of you. And it's, a, and, it's a, and it's an authority. It's a rule. It's a rule of Jesus. Jesus wants to rule your life. Imagine a king wanting to do that. When you think of it in those terms, it's a little different. Okay, his kingdom wants to come to bear on your life. He wants to rule over sickness. He wants to rule over debt. He wants to rule over discouragement. He wants to rule over sin. He wants to rule over every part of your life. 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 Have you guys ever heard of annexation? It's a, it's a country or a, or a kingdom kind of grabbing territories and making it part of the kingdom. It's a formal act by where a state proclaims its sovereignty over territory formerly outside of its domain. It means to add an area or a region to a country or a state. It means to take control of a territory or place. 2022, I want you guys to see the mundane parts of your life as little territories that the kingdom of God needs to annex in. Pull out. I just see that, just that covering of the kingdom of God pulling in your drive to work. And it's pulling in your water cooler conversation with your friends. Don't be telling those kind of jokes. It's pulling in the time when you're at home. Don't be so grouchy to your wife. Amen. It's pulling in those parts so that the kingdom of God can come to bear and it can rule over the mundane and the miraculous. 
it can rule over the ordinary so that we see God things happening. We hear the voice of the Lord. Our character is being changed and developed. I've got a few different quotes for you, as always. But Dale Brown says of uh, Frederick Buchner, the second quote is by Frederick Buchner, and Dale Brown wrote a book about him, but he's kind of talking about this. And he says, God is right here in the thick of our day-by-day lives, trying to get messages through our blindness. As Listen to this. As we move around here, move around down here, knee deep in the fragrant muck of misery and marvel of the world. His work, God's work. God, I'm going to say this last statement a couple times because it, it took me about 17 to, get, figure, to figure it out. His work embodies the persistent presentiment that something is trying to get through in the midst of the muddle of our everyday of our day-to-day lives. So his work, the work of God, consists of the persistent, the, the ongoing, the, the like a faucet constantly going, right? The persistent presentiment, that means like a premonition, kind of like a feeling that something's about to happen. This nagging feeling that capital S something is trying to get through in the midst of the muddle of our day-to-day lives. What he's saying is, is that we all in the back of our hearts and heads, but we don't recognize it, we've got this nagging sensation that something, someone, the Lord God is trying to make himself known during bacon and eggs on Thursday morning. That the Holy Spirit is blowing in the background. I feel something. What is it? But we've got this nagging suspicion that the Holy Spirit is wanting to say something while I'm at the post office. That the King of Heaven is rattling quietly in the background as I wash the meatloaf from my plates. That in the mundane is a scooping up of our hearts and an opening up of our ears and an awakening of our eyes to see that God wants to do something more than what we've thought. As we walk into 2022, we don't have to wait for the miraculous. We contend for it. I want to see it now. But I also recognize that God's in the mundane. And that positions me to see God all the time. Now, I've got to train myself for that. So I'm going to read this Frederick Buchner quote. quote. He says this, listen to your life. That means that's it. Like, I've got to make a decision. Slow down. Listen to your life. See it for the fathomless mystery that it is. In the boredom and pain of it, no less than in the excitement and gladness. Touch, taste, and smell your way to the holy and hidden heart of it. Because in the last analysis, listen, all moments are key moments. And life itself is grace. Oh, man. Isn't that good? The breath of life. God, forgive me for taking you for granted when I'm washing my clothes, which I do not that often. (laughs) When I'm folding socks. Oh, now we're getting to it. Does anyone love to do laundry? Stephen, you kind of like to do laundry. Yep. But really, even in the people that love to do laundry, socks... Really? Socks? They're kind of a nemesis in our house. Like, socks are not fun. There's so many of them. There's thousands of them. And they all want to be loners. (laughs) But this finding the breath and grace of God when I'm finding a life partner for my sock. Right? Well, this is, I'm really doing God things now. Yeah. Yeah, you are. You are. But it's up to us to find him in the middle of those moments. It's harder to miss God when someone uh, is, right, comes in on a, a machine that's beeping out things and keeping their heart alive. And you go, in Jesus' name, rise up and walk. And they're like, I'm healed. It's harder to miss God in that. Right? <laughs> Amen? Are you with me? Is anyone still here? Okay. It's easier to miss God during sock mating season. (laughs) 
Because it feels so normal. It feels so everyday. It feels so mundane. And God's like, that's when I've got so much to show you and teach you and breathe upon. But you've got to be willing to recognize me in those moments. Because that's when your deep walk is going to start with me. I don't need a lot of character to show up to a group of people where people are getting healed left and right. I don't need a lot of character for that. I need a lot of character on Tuesday morning when my bacon burnt and every last egg that I pulled out of the fridge was already cracked, which I've had a problem with lately. So I don't want to eat it because it might have bacteria. And I don't know. I should just eat it anyways. Well, right? And my car won't start like it did this morning. But I kept my Jesus. And I was very thankful that our van was ran last night and I could jump my car this morning. It's harder to maintain our character in those moments. And that's where the deep things of God come. So that we're prepared for those supernatural moments. So that you get to be part of it. Not just witness it from afar. You get to be smack dab in the middle. Smack dab. That's where you want to be in 2022. Smack dab. But you got to, be, you got to do the Mondays and Tuesdays if you want to be smack dab. Just saying. You read another. You guys ever heard of C.S. Lewis? He says this. And taking your life as a whole, say whole. Taking your life as a whole with all your innumerable choices, all your life long, you are slowly turning the central thing either into a heavenly creature or a hellish creature. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. It's, it's joy, peace, knowledge, and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us at each moment is progressing to the one state or the other. Wow! Imagine what 22, 2022 would look like if you didn't just rely on the supernatural miraculous moments, but you watched that play out in the mundane. Ooh, God's, what are you doing today? God's forming me. Oh, looks like you're doing laundry. Yep. God's breathing, God's working, God's moving. And I challenge you, as you read through your scriptures this year, look at all of the boring Monday, Tuesday stuff that's in there. It was not miraculous every moment. Don't get me wrong. I want miraculous every, like if I could, if, I, if you could like give me a choice, sign me up for miraculous every moment. Just don't get me wrong. Don't, don't mishear what I'm saying. Man, I want to see more than I've ever seen in 2022. But I also know that God holds back. He forms me in the mundane. See, look at this. John Tyson says, God's ultimate commitment isn't to fixing things. It's to forming his people. Hmm. God knows that my car is not going to start. Oh, sure. An angel could show up and be like, glory of God. And it would start right up. But you know what he's more concerned about? He's more concerned that I show up this morning carrying the character of Jesus. So he's like, all right, I'll help you. I'll give you the grace to fight the cold. <laughs> Put your gloves on. Don't be an idiot, right? It's like, okay, but that's pretty mundane. Yeah, but that's where you're formed. That's where the richness and the depth of God comes. The power of God comes in the supernatural. Give me all of it. But man, don't let it happen without character. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen without depth. Because you know what? I can see the, I can see the miraculous of God. And, and, and if I haven't learned to walk in peace, if I haven't learned to cultivate that fruit of the Holy Spirit, guess what I need? I need 20 more miracles just to get through next week. Oh, I need another miracle. Or God's developed the character in me to walk in supernatural peace and joy, humility, God, I need you to come and touch that guy because he's a jerk. Or I could teach you humility and patience and real love. Hmm. Is there like a choice, God, right? It's these mundane things where I'm developed and my character is developed and my heart is developed. John Mark Comer says this. It's our daily, seemingly insignificant decisions that eventually sculpt our characters and harden them into stone or free them into flourishing. I want to flourish. I want to flourish. He also says this, the decision to rejoice, to cultivate a way of seeing our lives in God's good world, not through the lens of our phones or news or apps or flesh, but to see the world through a lens of gratitude, celebration, and unhurried delight. 
Well, over time, over time, look at somebody say over time. It will over time form a wait, wait a minute, but I want the right now. And he's not he's saying, yeah, you can have the right now too. But also over time, it forms us into joyful, thankful people who deeply enjoy life with God and with others. What starts as an act of the will eventually turns into our inner nature. What begins with a choice eventually becomes character. Let me finish up with these three thoughts. For 2022, I'm praying for these three things. Praying for a fresh set of eyes to see the wonder and God moments that I might normally miss. I want, to, I want God, God, open my eyes. Open my eyes to see when I'm ready to complain about something, when I'm, when I'm taking something for granted, when I'm, when I'm in the middle of just ignoring you. God, help me to see you. Help me to see how you move on Thursday afternoons. Help me to see it. Help me to see what I'm not being grateful for. Help me to see what I'm taking for granted. Help me to see the God movement. Second thing I'm praying for is a fresh set of expectations. <laughs> I want to discover God while I'm preparing what I want to talk to my kids about because I need to discipline them because they're terrible kids. <laughs> it's not true. But doing the mundane job of parenting, I want to see God moments in that. Doing my budgeting, we just redid our budget sheet. That was long and boring, and some numbers are wrong, so I have to redo it all again. But in the middle of that, I want a fresh set. I want to expect. I want to. I want to. I want to say, because a lot of times I expect that I'm gonna. I'm gonna see God later tonight in my devotions when I read before I go to bed. I just got to get through this. Whoa, hold up, Jack. This is where it's at. I want to see God as I'm preparing supper. I don't want to miss those moments. Where the Holy Spirit is nudging my heart, where he's talking to me. But I also want to expect mountains to move. I don't want to say, well, that's just, just the way it is, honey. No, come on. I want to pray and pray again if we need to and pray again if we need to and call in some friends and uh, fast if we have to. I want to see the move of God. Lastly, a fresh set of habits. To position us to automatically encounter God regularly. You see, uh, 40 to 60% of what we do every single day is done automatically. It's done by habit. It's done just, you don't even think about it. You just do it by habit. Husbands, when you wake up and, and uh, are planning out the day with your wife, like, do you, do you spend five minutes talking about who's going to brush their teeth first and which toothpaste you're going to use? <laughs> no, we just do it. It's just habit just a habit of what I do with. What if, what if there's, there's probably, probably hundreds of habits in, in dozens of different, different areas in your life. What about instead of a huge sweeping change? What if some of what we've talked about already here today, what if you shifted two or three little habits? What if like Pastor Stephen talked about making room for, for what'd you call it? Solace and no solitude and silence and solace, silence and solitude. Silence and so what? If, what if? Well, I don't know if I could do a half hour. I'm, how about two minutes? What if you could shift two or three or five or six things so little that you barely notice it, but it becomes habit in your life that you automatically begin to experience God? What if on the way to work, instead of uh, you know listening to golden oldies or whatever, what if? What if I put on? Two minutes of a podcast. Well, that's not much. Anybody, right? Anybody can do two minutes. What if I put the Bible reading, uh, you know, the Bible on reading? <laughs> what is that? Audio. What if I did that? Well, I don't know if I can handle, you know, I drive, it's a half hour to work for me. I don't know if I can handle. Okay. How about from mile five to mile 10? How about for five miles? And it's just a, it's just a habit. Like a month, you know, two months from now, you're like, yeah, I just do that every day. I, Oh, that's really been that's really been a blessing. I didn't even really think about it, but I just do it all the time now. What if, what if I just connected with with someone, with one extra text or what you know, just bless them, pray. What if I prayed for one just one person once a week? 
You guys are always talking about interceding and prayer. Oh, gosh, I can't do that. How about for one person once a week? I don't, I don't know. Find out what God is nudging you to do and shift one or two little habits. Just tweak them a little bit and start to position your life to automatically encounter God in the mundane. Automatically. Automatically. The more automatic things we can do in our life, the more richness of God's presence we find.